Roll to hide. 20. You can't find yourself anymore. Make another character. Hey, what's up everybody, I'm Scatteray and welcome to another episode of D&D Green Text. As always, sit back and I hope you enjoy the video. Player character. Draw rogue. Sat in dark corner of tavern, glowering at everyone, playing with a dagger. Actually, is really friendly. The dark corner is easier on their light sensitive eyes. Squinting because of the fireplace. Really wants to talk to people and make friends, but is very shy. Dagger is a good luck present from her mom and reminds her of home. What was the most morally wrong thing a player character or your party did? Be me, forever DM. Be not me, Tiefling Sorcerer, Dragonborn Barbarian, Half-Elf Warlock and Drow Rogue. Be at the end of a very long campaign. The players approach the big bad evil guy's lair. When they get in, they're confronted with the big bad evil guy. He's holding a little girl hostage and using her as a human shield. Big bad evil guy, don't come any closer or I will splatter this little girl's brains all over the... Without any hesitation, the barbarian throws a dagger at the little girl's head. The little girl dies. Shocked, the whole party glares at the barbarian. Barbarian. What? Now he has no leverage. A cultivated half-orc bard who plays the violin and is trying to win the favor of the aristocracy, despite his race. A female paladin or cleric who's trying to win the favor of a god in order to lift a curse beset on her at birth. Turns out her curse is that Ziza closeted transgender. A woman with two small children who are looking for her husband who ran away to become an adventurer. While tracing his steps, the family becomes adventurers as well. A sentient skeleton that's growing flesh and awareness again and is looking for a necromancer to fix him back to his undead self. A chef fighter who kills monsters to cook them and is writing cookbooks for adventurers. Which of these should I roll for my next 5th edition D&D character? Better idea. Play a female halfling barbarian who has size dysmorphia. Essentially, believe that you are about 6 feet tall, even though you are actually about 3 feet tall. You attack things bigger than yourself. Have proficiency in intimidation. Call yourself Honey the Badger. Wanted the players to be more invested. Cultivated the habit in the players to discuss the plot and theorize about the future. They managed to predict 50% of the entire campaign just by listening to foreshadowing and knowing what sort of books and games I like. My face when. I am a genius. Oh no! Druid, my name is Eric with a K. NPC writes name down. And your last name? With a K. No, I got that. Eric, what's your last name? My last name is with a K. Wait, is your name Eric Eric? My last name is with a K. Okay, wait a minute, so to clarify. My last name is literally the phrase, air quotes, with a K. It's all one word. NPC finishes writing. So, review the document to make sure I got this right. Druid looks. No, I spell Eric with a C. Just at the end of a fun little campaign. A mystery, starting with a village where feral, animalistic humans start appearing with no explanation and causing chaos, unfolds into a story of animals being turned human against their will. End up fighting the guy doing it. Take him down. The room is full of cages of confused, frightened animal people in different states of undress. The ones who are obviously dogs look so stoked to see us though. We herd the whole bunch back into the village. The big good NPC wizard who helped us along the way knows the spell to turn them back. He goes through them until he reaches a beautiful young man, staring ahead blankly. The warlock steps in. No, that's our bard. Nothing wrong with him, he's just stupid. The bard with his intelligence of 7 and charisma of 16, smiles stupidly. We mostly use him as bait. Started up a water deep campaign with some friends yesterday. For helping rescue someone, we get a deed to a manor. Session suddenly becomes of some of the members wanting to get into house flipping, coping with a minor ghost haunting and learning about the proper disposal materials of potentially hazardous materials in water deep. Watching two of my party members arguing with the DM in how they could possibly get away with dumping barrels of old vinegar without getting caught was one of the most surreal things I've ever witnessed. Why does most media try to depict immortality as a bad thing? You gain immortality. So now. No matter what happens, you will never age, thus meaning all your friends, family and loved ones will grow old and die as you look as if you haven't aged a day. You're impervious to damage, so you will constantly feel the felon's guilt of seeing someone else die from injury. You will live till the end of time, 
meaning that the odds of you getting trapped increase to near certainty. Communities will think you are possibly stealing life from others to increase your lifespan and thus will drive you out of their towns. Imagine all of that forever. No wonder immortality is considered a bad thing. Ok, how does this sound? PCs investigate a rumor about a cockatrice lurking in a nearby ruin. Cockatrice is actually a kobold in a chicken suit, Scooby doing to scare the locals away. Bunch of kobolds digging out a new warren under the ruin. They were kicked out of their old warren by a gang of goblins. PCs go to evict the goblins. Goblins unleash their secret weapon. An actual cockatrice. That was a plot twist. That was, that was one hell of a plot twist. That's like... I roll to climb. 20. You launch yourself up with such incredible force that you end up in the stratosphere. Roll for falling damage. Roll to hide. 20. You can't find yourself anymore. Make another character. Try to convince the king to give you a pardon. Roll diplomacy. 20. You convince the king to kill everyone ever. Pickpocket. 20. You now hold the man's heart. He dies, and the guards are aware you just murdered someone. Roll to navigate traffic in your Ford Pinto. 20. Arrive in Yemen, wondering how you got there. Brag to desert wandering tribesmen about mad driving skills. Use rope to tie up prisoner. 20. It can never be removed by any means. You're a horrible person for doing this to someone. When the prisoner dies, the rope continues to bind their soul, resulting in some kind of freaky, incorporeal undead that hates you. Escape artist check. 20. Find yourself in the astral plane. Perform as a prince that has to retake his kingdom in a play. Roll a 20. Revolution. Bluff guard to convince him you're taking over his shift. 20. You've convinced yourself. You spend the rest of your life as a guard. Lie to someone. Roll a 20. You are so convincing that you fall for your own lie and believe it with absolute confidence. There's absolutely nothing wrong with playing a chaotic neutral rogue. If you play it correctly. Unfortunately, most rogues think chaotic neutral means I can kill every NPC for no reason and no one can say shit. I can treat everyone as if they're beneath me because that is what my character would do. I face no punishment for my actions due to me being neutral. I can steal from my party because it works with my charm. I'm better than all my lawful or good party members because I have no laws or morals holding me back. Those PCs are literal cancer. The end is story from tonight's game, Talk to the Snake, or how to spend 6 first level spells and 3rd and the 4th level spell to not cast speak with animals. Level 9 in Rise of Tiamat. We are sitting inside the office of the mayor to a small wood elf town. The mayor is hiding secrets from us and he won't admit it. He has a caged bird by his front door, it screeches and won't stop chirping at us. Me, the bard, to party. The bird must know his secrets, does anyone here know speak with animals? Party says no. Me. Hmm. Looks at Yuan Tai party member and gets idea. Me. Okay, I go outside, cast major image over the birdcage to illusion a birdcage with the bird asleep. They sneak into the illusion, feed the bird a treat to shut it up, and sneak out with it and its cage. Do all of this. Grab cleric's ring of spell storing, dump out all five cure wounds we had stored in it, and shove polymorph spell into it instead. Me. Okay, cleric. I'm holding the major image of the bird inside. We got the real bird outside. Please use the spell ring to polymorph it into a snake. Cleric does so. I proudly turn to the Yuan Tai and go, There, you can ask it now. Whole party is pumped at my crazy scheme, until Yuan Tai goes, Oh, uh, I can't speak with it. Me. What do you mean? You're a snake person. Talk to the snake. Yuan Tai. I can't. Me. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. It's a damn snake. How can you not talk to the snake, you snake person? Yuantai. Wait, I can cast friendship or suggestion on it, and it can understand me. Okay, Mr. Snake, I'm gonna ask you some questions. One hiss for yes, two hisses for no. Me. I'm throwing a tantrum while snake hisses responses to Yuantai. Answers are unclear. The cleric drops polymorph. I admit defeat and return the bird. No longer a snake. Barbarian finally chimes in to remind us his enchanted sword can cast detect thoughts at will. Sword detects thoughts and gets us all the info we need. Efficient spell slot usage. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave a like if you did and subscribe for more. Link below if you want to follow me on Twitch or join the Discord server or whatever else, there's links below. 
And yeah, that's it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.